Can you guess how many donuts the largest donut shop sells every single year? 2.9 billion donuts. Crazy, right? Every single day, Dunkin' Donuts, they sell to more than 3 million customers across 11,000 storefronts worldwide. In this video, I'm gonna be exposing the five psychological hacks that the Dunkin' Donuts' marketing team utilizes to bring in millions and millions of customers every single day so you can use them too. So make sure you guys keep watching. Hello friends, my name is Wilson, your friend in helping you build a thriving small business and a profitable food business. If you want to watch more of these psychological hacks, business tips, make sure you guys comment yes in the comment section below. This world is unfair. Top fast food brands, they employ these top marketers to use tricks, to trick people to buy from them again and again and again. These are the tricks that we as small business owners, we don't have the time, we don't have the resources, and we don't have the technical skill. And that's the reason why we created Food Marketing Labs, which includes 140 plus psychological hacks that these big corporations are using. We dug in their marketing channels, and now we've compiled all those, you getting the access, using the same marketing tactics as McDonald's, Chipotle, Starbucks, so you too can get more customers. So if you wanna level up your marketing, up your business, up your sales, make sure you guys check out Food Marketing Lab in the description down below. Now in this video, I'm gonna be revealing the five psychological hacks that Dunkin' Donuts use, so then that way you too can use it. Now, let's dive right in. The first psychological hack is the psychology of color. Friends, believe it or not, colors has a huge impact to the way we think and the way that we behave. In addition to that, we also associate certain memories, certain emotions, and certain characteristics to color. Just like how when we see the color red, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Aggressive, passionate emotions, whereas pink is feminine, it is playful. Now, since colors play such a big role in your emotions, characteristics, and your behavior, you bet that these big brands pay close attention to the colors that they use. Now, let's take, for example, the difference between Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks. The colors that they use are so significantly different not only from the moment you walk into their restaurant and the experience, the core and feeling, but also more importantly, the colors are very different. Now, for example, Dunkin' Donuts, the color is inviting, it's inclusive, it's fun, it's available for everyone. Whereas Starbucks, it's much more exclusive, much more status, much more premium. Now, how do they accomplish such a feeling with just the colors? Well, Dunkin' Donuts utilizes orange and pink. Orange is a very energetic color and it gives a really big sense of excitement, enthusiasm, and warmth. Orange is also a color often used to draw attention. Now, to match that with pink, it's a sense of joyfulness, creativity, softness, and happiness. Now, the color does not only live on the outside packaging of Dunkin' Donuts, they utilize it into their products as well. For example, when we take a look at their donuts, they're often very colorful, very playful, giving us a sense of alignment with what their values are. Fun, being inclusive, and being for everyone. So what does that mean to you? That means whenever you're thinking about creating your own restaurant, creating your food brand, think about what your values are. Think about the feeling you wanna to invoke to your customers. The first impression that they have with your brand is the colors. Do you wanna be inviting? Do you wanna be exclusive? Do you wanna be high end? Choose your colors wisely. Use it in your marketing. Use it on your website, use it on your branding, use it on your logo being able to communicate this and being able to wrap them all up and integrate this into all your marketing channels is how you can deliver that sense of brand. Second psychological tip, sell on habits. What does that mean? What is the best way to get the people to buy from you again and again and again? Well, tap into their habits and their activities. What do they do on a regular basis? And this is exactly what KitKat did by signaling their bar representing 
taking a break. So whenever someone takes a break, they would be thinking about eating a bar. Just like how they incorporated it into their slogan, have a break, have a Kit Kat. Same thing with Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola associating their brand with a holiday. What is that holiday? It is Christmas. And that's exactly what Dunkin' Donuts did with their coffee. Or should I say dunking their donuts in a coffee. Associating coffee time with donut at Dunkin' Donuts. In the early 2000s, Dunkin' Donuts saw this opportunity and started to focus on coffee. Thus bringing a huge coffee revolution. They knew that coffee is such an integral part of everyone's daily lives. And that's the reason why they started with pure basic coffee and slowly creeping up to different types of fancy coffee as the palate of their customers start to develop. In an interview with the CEO of Dunkin' Donuts, Nigel Travis, he said that the drinks beverage accounts for more than 60% of Dunkin Donuts' annual sale. Now to make sure that everything works within their brand and their values, they price their coffee at a much more affordable rate, so then that way it appeals to the masses. Very different than Starbucks pricing out a lot of their customers. And the beautiful thing about selling coffee, well, it is because people don't just come in to buy a coffee. Most likely, they would tag on donuts, drinks, soups, or even lunches. So what's the opportunity for you? Think about your target audience and what type of habits they have. Think about how you can inject your food or provide a solution to your customer's daily routine. For instance, if you notice within your neighborhood, everyone goes to this specific coffee shop in the morning just to get their morning coffee. Well, it is something that you may want to consider incorporating into your restaurant, your business. Whereas if your customers love reading, then perhaps you can host a weekly reading night, a book club, for example, every single week on the slower nights. The bottom line is, guys, you need to understand what your customers are doing, understand their habits, understand how they buy, and you want to be able to incorporate your food item into their daily lives. The third psychological hack is the Barnum effect. You know what is the most interesting topic that there is? The topic is you. Everyone has this insatiable appetite and interest to talk about themselves. And Dunkin' Donuts, they took full advantage of our desire to talk about ourselves in their campaign. So in that way, they created a ton of buzz, a ton of noise, and a ton of sales. This campaign is the Dunkin' My Donut personality campaign. So what happened? In 2017, in honor of the National Donut Day, Dunkin' Donuts came up with a campaign which matched your personality with what you choose to eat, what you choose to order. Basically, they're telling you what type of personality you are just by the donuts that you choose. Now, everyone goes online, created a ton of buzz just to share people with what type of donuts they represent. Not only that, they also matched you with the perfect cup of coffee, being able to actually match the cup of coffee that tastes best with the donut of your choice. This is precisely what the Barnum effect is. It is when an individual believes that personality descriptions apply specifically to them, way more than other people. Now, although the personality descriptions are actually often filled with information that applies to everyone else. So how does this work? Well, we as humans have an inherent sense of being able to self-identify with certain things. The desire to self-identify is also the reason why we love personality tests, we love horoscopes. And that is also the reason why more than 90% of Americans, they know their star symbol, their star sign. And more than 50% of these people, they actually read the horoscope, they self-identify, and they actually take advice from these horoscopes. Now, speaking about horoscopes, this industry is worth more than $2.2 billion, guys. Well, by the way, Barnum Effect is not exclusive only used by Dunkin' Donuts. Starbucks uses it, Cha Time uses it, Krispy Kreme uses it in their marketing efforts on social media. 
So what does this mean to you? Know the fact that we as humans, we love to self-identify. We love to talk about ourselves. The most interesting in the world is ourselves. That's the reason why if you, and when you know this about human beings, look at your customers, see who you cater to the most and then create a dish that is, for example, known for them. Being able to allow them to self-identify. For example, for the courageous, for the dreamers, for the wanderers, for the family guy. The fourth psychological hack that these big brands uses is the sensory appeal. Imagine you walking down the street, you walk past a bakery and you smell this fresh baked aroma. You can't help but think about the buttery croissant taste. And taste, even though it's not the morning time, you are craving for that croissant. This, my friend, is the power of sensory appeal. This strategy is used super often with big brands because the food and beverage business is just so fitted for this strategy. Dunkin' Donuts is no different. Sensory marketing is being able to stimulate one of our five senses or a combination of the five senses, whether it's our sight, our hearing, our smell, our touch, or our taste. The stimulation of any of these senses is what really makes us feel a certain way, makes us act a certain way, make us have certain behaviors. Just because it might sound simple, hey, stimulate your senses, does not mean it's easy to use. They have certain strategy that you can employ very differently in order for you to encourage your customers to buy more. For instance, with Costco, they often position their tasting sampling stations right at the end of the aisle. Why is that the case? It is to encourage you to buy more as you push your cart down the aisle. This could very well mean an extra bag of dumplings, an extra bag of cheese, an extra bag of your favorite nachos. Big brands are able to utilize these sensory appeal very, very strategically. Specifically for Dunkin' Donuts, they were able to utilize the sensory appeal to bump up their coffee sales in a super competitive marketplace, South Korea. So what did they do? They knew that people in Korea, they view Dunkin' Donuts as a donut first shop, coffee second location. And that is precisely the perception that they want to change. They don't want to be just known as the donut shop. They want to be known as a coffee shop as well. One thing that they notice is that people that usually buys coffee is on a commute heading to work. So what did they do? They installed these flavor radio boxes on all the bus stops in Seoul. What does that mean? That means that everyone that walks by, they emit a sense of coffee smell and then they play a Dunkin' Donuts jingle. In addition to that, they also plastered their own advertisements on the buses, on the bus stops as well. So what was the result? This campaign was experienced by more than 350,000 of their customers. Dunkin' locations that were close by to these bus stops, they had an increase in sales by more than 16%. Overall as a chain, they made more than 30% increase because of this campaign. So what is an opportunity for you? Now I know you probably don't have the budget to install these flavored radio stations at bus stops. It's okay guys, it's okay. And that's the reason why you need to think about what kind of samples can you provide your customers? What kind of experience do you wanna to deliver to your customers? Challenge all five of your senses, whether it's taste, and we see that quite often at an ice cream shop. Taste is always the best thing because you know what? Everyone walks in, they wanna try your ice cream, and you give them different tasters for different ice cream. Now for us, we challenge not just the taste, but also the visual. That's the reason why we installed a certain insert, a very specific insert that allows smoke to come out of a cup. So when people order their ice cream, not only are they, are they able to taste it, but also visually it is super stimulating for our ice cream shop. Now let's say if you don't sell ice cream, what else can you do? Think about what kind of samples can you give away in order for you to stir up these emotions, stir up the idea for people to purchase more. Let's say for example, you're in a Chinese restaurant well, you know what? You can provide a sample, not just of the dish that they ordered, but a dish of something else that might go well with 
what they ordered. This itself allows us to stimulate your customers in a different way. And a final tip for you, crack open your doors guys, if what you're serving has a big aroma, has a very pleasant aroma, let's say you're a coffee shop, let's say you sell barbecue, let's say you sell pizza, let's say you sell ice cream, the waffle smell, open up your doors, let the smell travel out, let the smell grab your customers into the doors to buy more from you. Fifth psychological hack, gamification. Gamification is the use of game elements in non-gaming activities. Employing gamification can enhance your customer and your employee engagement. It can boost sales and on top of that, it can cut costs. Gamification is a super powerful tactic and technique. In my previous video right here, we talked about how Domino's is able to utilize gamification in their tracking system. In Dunkin Donuts' case, they follow the same footsteps as McDonald's and Starbucks. They utilize gamified rewards and loyalty programs to reward you with points for every purchase that you make. The points that you generate, it can be redeemed for donuts, coffee, and sometimes they even have bonus days, giving you double the points that you can accumulate. So why does this work? Well, achievement is one of the most powerful feelings that drives a human to do something. If you can achieve this, if you can make your customers feel achieved, then they would have much higher chances to come back. And on top of that, who doesn't like a reward? Oftentimes, people will go out of their way just to get a reward. So what does that mean to you? Add gamification to increase your loyalty. If you don't have all the bells and whistles and the budget for something like this, it is completely fine. Use a simple stamp card, like any coffee shop, like any bubble tea shop. Other ways you can incorporate loyalty programs would be through Square or different applications out there. What you need to do is to make sure the reward you're giving out is attractive enough. Think about it. If you are not willing to do the activity in order for you to earn the reward, what makes you think your customers will? And that's the reason why you must make the perks attractive, appealing, so then that way your customers will actually want it. And at the same time, make sure the rewards won't break your bank. Make sure you are profitable at the same time. Bonus point for you guys, add exclusivity to different events and different holidays, making people come in during these times just so then that way you can double off their points or give away something more special just because they showed up during these events. So there you go, friends. These are the top five psychological hacks that Dunkin' Donuts and all these big corporations utilizes to get people to buy more from them, to get people to become loyal fans, so then that way they can get more customers. And if you're interested in utilizing some of these secret hacks, tactics that these big corporations uses, then definitely check out in the link below Food Marketing Labs, which has more than 140 psychological hacks that we compiled together, shared with you, so then that way you can get more customers for your food business. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys do, make sure you guys smash that like button because it shows us that this is the type of content that you enjoy. What does that do? It makes us more, make more of these guys for you. Now, I'll see you guys in the next video.